Now we're out back on the porch, hopefully the covered porch, and it's time to do our laundry and some outside chores. Laundry done by hand. Hard work for women and, and their daughters. You had to put the laundry, smash it, rub it like this. If you're really fortunate, you had a ringer attached so you could wring the water out after you're done scrubbing it and then hang it up, which people even today like to hang their laundry up. It smells good. So that's how you did your laundry. And you tried to only do that once a week because it was so hard to work. You'll see a selection of irons that they used, kerosene irons, oil, oil irons, and ones that you actually heated up on your stoves and fireplaces. Because there wasn't permanent press, so everything got wrinkled. Now, we're gonna step over here. We're gonna see that some of the things that you might see on a farm, you might see an old fashioned cider press here where you put apples in a course and made cider. And you can see how difficult that would be. Everything's done by hand. A cream separator, you go out and milk your cows, come in, put it in here, and it goes down and around here, and you crank it, and it separate it from milk to cream. Outside, maybe in the barn, you'd see some of these interesting items, an old-fashioned hand plow that you push. You know, this is just a small one. This would be a personal one. You could still use a cow, an oxen, maybe a horse to get help you get it through rough land. But think how hard it is. And think how big an acre is, a football field. And they had lots of acres, 100 acres, more than 100 acres. And they had to plow it all by hand. So it was, there was a lot of physical work involved. Get up in the morning, build a fire, do your chores, make breakfast by scratch. You know, I mean, there was just a lot. And you can see some of the other hand tools that were in here and how hard and heavy. Things are heavy. If you come down, you should touch some of these things and see how heavy they were. More just rough outside tools out of here. And there's a hold it by and start chopping grass. Okay, now, moving in here. Here's what I talked about in the beginning. This is Elizabeth's trunk, where Elizabeth came across on a wagon train. And that story is so interesting. You really need, I really, that's an awesome story. You really need to read it. And here's, this is her, a map of where she traveled. And imagine this would be in the wagon and you could only bring what you could fit in here. It's not a lot of things. Of course, we have a milk can. We have our wagon. More modern equipment, we're moving up here. Horses, oxen, a wagon. Most families that lived on farms had some sort of a wagon. Not this nice, but they had some sort of a wagon so when they went in town they could haul things back. You know, they, it was real important if someone was injured they had a place to take them into the doctor. You'll also see we have a gun collection up here of old-fashioned rifles. Every home had to have one. That's where mostly you got your meat. Here is our, here's another trunk. Now, mind you, this person brought what they had in here. This is like their closet. You know, they could hang some things up. They had some drawers for smaller items and personal items. They had, I don't think I can get this open, but they had an area here where they could pack things and put them in. And these are also extremely heavy. These aren't something that the light would pick up. This is something, you know, that's going to take some muscle to get this, up, especially up on a wagon. You get all that. Okay. Now, we're going to skip over here to our school house. 
hard to imagine schools. When school started, they'd be one room. Everybody's in the same room, no matter how old you are or what your knowledge is at that time. Here, what we have is just some local things from our high schools that you'll know, probably not that as old, but we have all the albums, high school yearbooks up here, sports paraphernalia. If you're a sports person, you might look at some of the differences in the equipment and uniforms today. You might see somebody in your family that signed one of these footballs or basketballs, or you can look things up. Here's photographs of school schools. There's some more over here. You might, you might really want to look up family members because if you're from this community or you know people, you'd be surprised. Cheerleader. Here we go. Culottes. Old fashioned cheerleader outfit. Not very short. And here you go, some awards that people have shared with us from the past. Some small dioramas of schools, schoolhouses. They had to do things. There were pencils with lead available, but there was also ink. And they would have fountain pens and, and ink and there where they had to hand write. And back then you learned to write cursive writing, printing, everything done by hand on paper or chalkboard for the young kids. Now we're gonna talk about the dioramas. A local person, Gary Brooks, who you may have known as our local dentist till he retired recently. He, this is what he does in his spare time. He makes dioramas. He does much research. Amazing amount of research goes into this. He takes pictures, he gets measurements, and then he brings them down. And so they're made on scale. Details them out of all the things locally. You know, here's part of the town. You can see here, it's really amazing. And if you look over here, our brick plant, out where Willamina Lumber is, used to be a brick plant. This is what it looked like. And this is just amazing. Once again, he tries to get this to scale. He works for months and months on these. It isn't something he does lightly. He could work a year on one project. So really come down and look at these things. This you find fascinating. This is a books by the bookkeeper with wages in it, people's names. If you had a family member that worked at the brick plant, you might find them in here and you might be shocked how little money everybody made. And then there's samples of the bricks that were made. And this is our research room. There's also some hand tools here that you may want to look at. Just a variety of miscellaneous hand tools. This is our research center. You could find out a ton of information about local history. If you're doing any reports for local history, we have the obituaries from way, way back. And we have all kinds of photo albums from things, including the fire department in the past. Information about local, all kinds of local area people. We have Grand Ronde Confederated Tribes, some history of Grand Ronde some historical things from the past found in our area, baskets, arrowheads, a variety of things. Okay, let's, let's walk on this way now because I skipped another diorama over here. Something that you might find interesting, there were keyboards, there weren't even electric typewriters old-fashioned typewriters that you hand use old-fashioned adding machines that you put it in and pull down to get them to work very very interesting on how things were used if you worked in an office you of course you didn't have these things at home you counted on doing it by hand this is the last thing i want to show you here a little bit of Scout history here, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, actual 
uniforms and things donated by actual local people. So you may recognize these. Here's some more dioramas that Mr. Brooks has done. This one is Fort Vancouver water powered mill. Very fascinating. Here we go. This is just a little local industrial area. It's got train going through here. Just amazing. And once again, so much detail goes into this and so much research and work. And wow, a lot of these little pieces, Dr. Brooks or Gary Brooks, he makes them himself. He molds the plastic, sands them, paints them, just tons of hours in each one of these. And back to the logging, and I think that pretty much ends our tour. Thank you for coming, and make sure you come down and visit so you can see these things in real and touch them and maybe ask questions and get them answered. Hope to see you soon. Bye.